This is the introductory lesson on uh, chapter 2 dealing with geomorphology. This lesson deals with the drainage basin and specifically the terms associated with the drainage basin. It is important to understand and be able to especially define these terms in order for you to gain a better understanding for the remainder of this chapter. Let's begin with the term catchment. Catchment is the action of collecting water, especially the collection of rainwater over a natural area. Drainage refers to the movement of water over land and that water eventually enters into other bodies of water like rivers. So drainage involves the removal of water from the land into rivers. Let's define the terms catchment area and drainage basin. The catchment area refers to that area on which rain falls and then gathers. It is the area that collects water for the river. The drainage basin refers to the area drained by a river system. So if we looked at a portion of land where water falls on that piece of land, that is called the catchment and once the water starts moving over that land and makes its way into the river that piece of land or that area is called the drainage basin a river system is made up of the main river and its tributaries where the tributaries refer to the smaller streams that do join the main river. So that river system is made up of the main river plus the smaller streams that join the main river. The place where two or more streams or the place where the smaller streams join each other or where the smaller streams join the main stream, that is called the confluence. So a river system, the main river and its tributaries. The tributaries refer to the smaller streams that join the main river and the place where two or more streams come together or join is called the confluence. Let's distinguish between the terms interflu and watershed. If you have a look at the definitions, you'll notice that both interflu and the watershed refer to a high ground or high lying ground. However, the watershed is high ground that separates drainage basins from each other. The interflu refers to high ground that separates the tributaries within the same drainage basin. If you were to consider this red staggered line, it separates the drainage basin of stream 2 from the drainage basin of stream 1. So because this high lying ground separates the drainage basins completely from each other, it constitutes what is called a watershed. However, within a particular drainage basin where there is high ground represented by the red staggers, but this high ground separates tributaries within the same drainage basin, then that constitutes an interflu. The place where a river starts is called its source and that's often high up in mountainous areas and the place where the river then ends at the sea or it could end and empty out into a lake that is called the river mouth. So the river starts at the source and it ends at the river mouth. The main source of water for the drainage basin is precipitation, mainly in the form of rainfall. Once the precipitation or rainfall hits the surface of the earth, one of two things can happen. It can remain on the surface of the earth or it can soak into the earth. If the water remains on the surface of the earth and it moves over the surface of the earth towards the river, that process is called or surface runoff, water that soaks into 
the earth is called infiltrated water by the process of infiltration. Infiltration, infiltrated water, one of two things can happen. The water can move through cracks and holes in the earth and eventually make its way into the river. That process is called through flow or the water can accumulate inside the ground as what we call groundwater and if that groundwater then intercepts the river channel that groundwater reaches the river as base flow so after precipitation either the water runs over the surface of the earth into the river or the water soaks into the earth by the process of infiltration all the water that gathers inside the earth is called groundwater the upper level of the accumulated water inside the earth is called the water table so the water table is the upper level or the upper boundary of all of the groundwater the water table is important uh, when it is applied to the concept of the types of rivers which you will have a look at in a follow-up lesson here's an example of how drainage basin terminology and concepts could possibly be tested the question below which is question 2.1 was taken from paper 1 of november 2023 and candidates were expected to match the terms with a particular letter from the diagram at this stage it would be a good idea to just pause and see how many of these questions you're able to answer uh, the solutions are on the next slide